Oh God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. God, you have not left us alone. And for that, we thank you. We give your name the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you with the fruit of our lips. We'll give you praise in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray in this place, Lord, that your, your presence, Lord, will fill this place. In the name of Jesus. God, as we offer an offering of sacrifice, of worship unto thee, God, in the name of Jesus, God, touch every heart in the name of Jesus. God, touch every mind, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you'll restore unto us, God, that God that the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar have eaten. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, for this season, Lord, God, that we live this. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. So, God, we have so many things going on. God, we thank you for continuing to protect us. We thank you for continuing to keep us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for health. We thank you for strength, God. We thank you for our right minds, God. We thank you for activity of all of our limbs. We thank you, yet we still have blood running warm in our veins. And oh God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for just moving in our homes, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. God, moving on our jobs. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, for you made ways out of no way. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, when the enemy had desire to destroy us, God. God, in the name of Jesus, you just made a way for us in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we have this opportunity to yet praise you. We have this opportunity to yet glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, with our lips, we utter praise unto thee. In the name of Jesus, we give ourselves over to you, Lord. Living sacrifice, God, holy and acceptable unto thee. God, in the name of Jesus, God, completely over to thee. In the name of Jesus. And God, we are praying, God, for this service, Lord. God, as we, God, endeavor to do your will, as we endeavor to, God, to bring forth the word, God, in the name of Jesus in this season. God, we pray that you would just touch, God, each and every recipient. In the name of Jesus, we'll ever give your name the praise. Anoint the speaker of the hour. In Jesus' name. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. God bless you, beloved. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor our leader, Bishop Evan Jones Sr. and Lady Linda Jones. We're happy that you have joined us for worship on today. We are located at 5419 Davis Mill Road here in the beautiful city of Greensboro, North Carolina. Our regular church services is as follows. Sunday school, 9.45 a.m. Sunday morning worship is at 11 a.m. Feet washing and communion service every first Sunday. Youth service every third Sunday. Our Bible study is on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Any and all evening services are preceded by one hour of prayer. We are not meeting according to schedule. However, you may worship with us every Sunday at 12 noon on our New Jerusalem Tabernacle of Prayer Facebook page. If you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by sowing a seed, using Givelify and choosing New Jerusalem Tabernacle of Prayer or mail to P.O. Box 13424, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27415. We thank you for all of your giving, your contributions, and for tuning in to this live. On the behalf of our leader and New Jerusalem Tabernacle of Prayer, it is our, our prayer that you experience God's warm embrace. It's our prayer that God meets every need in your life. At this time, as we go into praise and worship, we pray that you open up your heart to receive the word of God and a move of God in your life on today. Receive our praise and worship leader, Elder Rico Worthy. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
Amen. Children, we thank the Lord for his goodness. We thank him for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many know the Lord is faithful? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it doesn't matter what you're going through, the Lord is faithful. He's faithful to bring us through. Amen. He's faithful to bring us out. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God on victory side. Amen. Glory to God. Come on and worship with us for a little while. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yeah.
I love the song that say, You can't make me doubt. I know too much about it. You can't make me doubt the Lord Jesus.
the son of the living God. Hallelujah. There's none like him. He's worthy to be praised. I want to thank God for every support. Everyone. Amen. Under the sound of my voice. Glory to God. For our devotional leaders, the announcers, the musicians, the elders, the deacons, the top of the saints and queens. Thank God. Amen. Amen for our song. Songs for this morning. Elder Rico Worthy. We appreciate you so much. Amen. Amen. Matthew 3, I want to read verses 13 through 17. It reads as follows. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee, the Jordan unto John, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove yes. and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven mm -hmm. saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I want you to call your attention to verse 14 again. Well, the scripture says, but John forbade him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I want to speak to you for a few moments from the theme. Let the Lord have his way. Yeah. All right. Let the Lord have his way. You may be seated. Amen. Glory to God. When we look at the opposition of John in verse 14, it is written, but John forbade him. Uh, many uh, theologians look at this as a spirit of humility, that he's humbling himself, he's been in the limelight, and uh, in the uh, People from all walks of life are coming to him and to his baptism. Uh, the common people, the, the rich, the scribes, the Pharisees, the tax collectors. And when John saw him, he said, I didn't know him, but the one that called me to, to preach this message. Said unto me, when, when you see him, mm -hmm. to come, and you see the spirit like a dove coming and lighting up on him, resting on him, mm -hmm. he's the one yeah. that shall baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glory to God. But even though it's said that it's humility, I can all see in opposition here. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, you see, when the Bible says he forbade him, forbade. Is a simple past tense of forbid. Uh -huh. 
means to refuse to allow something. You know, I was thinking about that, you know, I said, we, it, it, let that be a warning unto us. Mm-hmm. When the Lord called on us to do something, uh, you shouldn't refuse. Come on. You don't know what you're hindering. You don't know what you're holding up. Can you say amen? And we go down through this lesson, I hope you can see what's being held up and what's being held back. Glory to God because of his refusal to do what the Lord had requested. Thus I say, uh, it come to me, let the Lord have his way. Glory to God. You see, when he forbade him, it meant he refused to allow him to do what he wanted to do. Especially officially. It prevented a particular plan of action by making it possible or impossible. You see, what the Lord had planned to do. Uh-huh. I've, I've come to find out that the Lord knows better about this life and this journey and what his plans are than we know. Yeah. And so when he bid us to do something, it's best that we submit and do what God is requiring of us. Uh, to forbid or to forbid is to uphold. It's to hinder or to obstruct. I would like to remind you that three of the gospel writers wrote that Jesus was baptized by John. Uh, In the Jordan, Mark, if you still have your Bible, Mark 1, verse 9 through 11 says, And it came to pass in those days, that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heaven open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. And also Luke chapter 3, verses 21 through 23. Luke 3, 21 through 23 says, Now, when all the people were baptized, notice that, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heavens were open and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. A voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my son, my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was a, as supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Now, for our daily text, for our, day, for our text today, Matthew 3, 13 through 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee. Mm-hmm to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said to him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us. To fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, Mm -hmm. went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. 
And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Again, I want to say, let the Lord have his way. In Matthew 3 and 13, the word again says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan, unto John to be baptized of him. I want you to observe the phrase, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan. Tradition fixes upon a ford of Jordan, east of Jericho, mm -hmm. as the place where Jesus was baptized. It was the same section of the river which opened for the passage of Israel under Joshua uh -huh. and later for Elijah and Elisha. This fort is 70 or 80 miles from Nazareth. I suppose it depends on which direction you go. Can you say amen? Yeah. Jesus came. Look again. Unto John to be baptized of him. He set out. Think about it. I said he set out from Nazareth. Intending to be baptized. Such was his intention. Before he heard John preach. And he was therefore not persuaded. By John's preaching. Hadn't heard John preaching. He was living in that. His righteousness. Was not the result of human persuasion. Anyone listening. Here we have our Savior. So inauguration and public entrance upon his prophetic office by baptism or washing with water according to the manner of the priest under the ceremonial law that we see in Exodus 29 and 4. And Aaron and his sons Thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt wash them with water. Amen. And also Exodus 30 and 18 says, Thou shalt also make a leaven of brass, and his feet also with brass, to wash with all. And thou shalt put in between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar and thou shalt put water therein. What you're saying? Well, this signifies the universal pollution of all men and the absolute need that they have for washing. Especially when they are to draw nigh to God. And this outward washing uh -huh. was only typical of their spiritual washing by the blood and the spirit of Christ in order to their acceptance with God. Where we have recognized, first of all, the circumstances of the time. Then cometh Jesus. Somebody say, then cometh Jesus. That is, after he had lain here in Nazareth 30 years, hallelujah, he comes abroad, I mean elsewhere, not his hometown, but traveled abroad and entered upon his public ministry. The scriptures that relate to him during the 30 years was when he was 12 years old, talking to the doctors and the lawyers. Hallelujah. And we don't hear anything else, Father. Until now, 
He's coming for his inauguration. A public service. Can you say amen? Observe the action itself. Christ is baptized now as he was circumcised before. Not because there was any impurity in him. Uh, neither filth or foreskin which wanted either the circumcised the circumcising night or the baptism of water. Yet purity itself condescended to be washed. He was pure. I said purity. Because they don't want to hear me. What I'm saying condescended to be washed. Christ to be baptized for these reasons. First of all, that by this symbol he might enter himself into society, into the society of Christians, as by circumcision he had gone into the society of the Jews. As a king condescends sometimes to be made a free man of a city. Hallelujah. Second, that he might, by his own baptism, sanctify the ordinance of baptism unto the church. Thirdly, that whereby he might fulfill the righteousness of the ceremonial law, which required the washing of the priests in war. When they enter upon their office, as appeared from Exodus 29 and 4, observe the great condemnation. Excuse me. Observe the, the great condemnation, condescending, condescending of Christ. Hallelujah. In seeking and submitting to the baptism of John. Christ coming to John. And not John to Christ. Uh -huh. Behold, the Lord speaketh to his servant. Hallelujah. Christ will be baptized of his messenger. Our, our Savior's design hereby no doubt was to put on upon the ministry of John. Uh -huh. oh, oh, how dare the greatest upon earth despise the ministry of men being appointed by God, which Christ honored in his own person and grace with his own presence. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, you must be careful how you criticize ministries. Mm -hmm. If God has his hands on it. Mm -hmm. No matter the signs of it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Condescend. Condescend means to descend from the privilege. The privileges of superior rank. Superior dignity. Mm -hmm. To do some act of some act to an inferior which strict justice or ordinary rules of severity do not require. Solidity do not require. Thirdly, to stoop or descend to yield. I'm talking about condescend. Listen at this. But John forbade him. Jesus came to him and made a request. Have you ever come to you and made a request? And you forbid it? And you gave your reasoning? Glory to God. You might want to rethink that. Again, I read it again. I can't say it enough. John forbade him. Saying, I have need 
to be baptized of thee. That was his uh, answer. And he says, come it down to me. But John, you know, even though, like I say, some say, this was the spirit of humility. But would you recognize, John tried to prevent him. Mm -hmm. John protested. Christ wanted to be baptized, but John would have kept him back. John sought to dissuade him. John protested sternly by saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. It is I, he said, that ought to be baptized by thee. And coming down to me, why then do you come to me? Amen. But look at verse 15. Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. What was he saying? Let it be so for the present, John. Let it be on this occasion that you do what I ask you to do. Let me have my way. Hallelujah. How many of you are willing to let the Lord have his way? Yes. Glory to God. He said, have my way now. Yeah. Glory to God. The Lord, how many willing <laughs> to let the Lord have his way right now? Hallelujah. If you're not, if you're willing, I want you to lift your voice and shout, yes. Yes, yes Lord. I'm willing. Jesus said, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What's he saying? Since it is fitting for us thus to satisfy every claim of religion. John is fitting. For we ought to fulfill every religious duty to come. John, can you hear me? It is right for me to meet all the law's requirements. John, I'm talking to you. And when he finished saying that, the Bible says, then, somebody say then. Then, then he suffered him. Hallelujah. Upon this, John consented. John gave in to him. He agreed to be baptized. He agreed to baptize him. When I was studying this, I wanted to say, I wonder what it's going to take for you <laughs> say, to agree what God is saying for you to do. What is it going to take for you to agree? Now, you all seek him. I say, heaven, my God. My God. What is it going to take for you to consent to what God is requiring of you? Hallelujah. Now, look what happened. Verse 16. Glory to God. Jesus, when he was baptized, when John gave in, he said, okay, I'm going to do what you want me to do. Oh my God. Went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. You see, John didn't realize what he was holding up. And many of you don't realize what you're holding up when you tell God no. Or when you tell God I'm not ready yet. Hallelujah. When you tell God, let me work out some stuff. Let me get right here and there. I am all seeker. You don't know what you're doing. Can you say amen? They didn't know. He didn't realize what he was thinking about. The heavens were open. When he obeyed the Lord, when he let God have his way, the Bible says the heavens opened up. Well, what concern is that? Seeing, shut up hell, and put a stop to all friendly connection. Or dealing between God and man. When Adam and Eve messed up, I say, heaven, sin, 
shut up him and put a stop to the communication between God and me. Is anyone listening? But now twice has he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Aren't you glad about it? Jesus saw and John saw and I believe everyone present at this inauguration saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him and coming upon him resting upon Jesus. Hallelujah. For this was the intent to be his public inauguration. The phrase, like a dove, the spirit of Christ is like an innocent dove. I want to say without God, without something bitter to endure. Can you say amen? amen. The spirit descended not in the shape of an eagle, which is but a royal bird, yet a bird of prey, but in the shape of an eagle. Hallelujah. No creature is more harmless and inoffensive. Hallelujah. The dove was the only fowl Offer in sacrifice. Leviticus 1.14 says, And if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be a fowl, be a fowls, then he shall bring his offering of cattle doves or young pigeons. Same thing. Glory to God. And look at verse 17 and say, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And that, and with that, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. This is my son, the beloved, in whom I delight. In whom I rejoice, on whom my favor rests, with him, with whom I am pleased. You see, a voice from heaven, the Spirit manifested himself in the likeness of a dove. But God the Father, by the voice, behold, hallelujah. Beloved Son, Jesus Christ, is the Son of God. Hallelujah. By eternal generation, I say Jesus is the Son of God. By eternal generation, as he was begotten of the Father before all the world, Colossians 1.15 declares, who is the image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. The firstborn of every creature. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The image of the invisible God embodied and manifesting to men the attributes and characteristics of God. Hallelujah. As it is expressed in 1 Timothy 3.16 that reads and without controversy, great is the mystery of God. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. I said, God yes. 
manifest in the flesh the firstborn of every creature, the head of the whole creation, the expression. Firstborn denotes the chief or head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is the one that John was talking about when he was preaching and teaching the people. You know, the next day the Bible says, the day after the Jews made him crown, for he was the son of was he was the Christ. Hallelujah. Well, they were letting them know, I'm not here. I'm not the one. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Yeah. Are ye he? Thank you, no. Mm -hmm. Are you alive? No. Are you one of the prophets? Yeah. Hallelujah. That's required. That's inquired about. John said, no. Glory to God. He told him, hallelujah, I'm not the one, but there's one coming after me whose shoes, hallelujah, or as it was in that time, whose sandals, I'm not worthy to unloose. Glory to God. And then the Bible says, the next day, John seen Jesus coming unto him. Said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me, and I knew him not. But that it should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am, therefore am I come baptized with water. And John, bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove into the board upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on. The same is he, hallelujah, which baptized with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And I saw him, and I saw in bad record that this is the Son of God. Hallelujah. You see, they had been waiting. I said, waiting on the Son of Consolation. They've been waiting on the Consolation of Israel. Hallelujah. Make you think about us today. Many don't realize it, but yeah, we're waiting on the consolation of all nations. Glory to God. He's coming, ready or not. And while he's on his way, I want to encourage you to let the Lord He said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger, a stranger, they shall not, they shall not follow. I, I know them, and I know them, and they shall follow me. Hallelujah. Watch and pray that you enter not in the temptation. Hallelujah. Do you know the Spirit of God and what the God that dealt with you? Hallelujah. And prompt you and move you to do what he called you to do. Then what are you waiting on? 